Hi everyone, this is SS Mahapatra, faculty under the Department of Electrical Engineering from Government Polytechnic Mahapada. Today we will discuss on the voltage regulation of CPU generator. Generally, the performance of a machine can be known from varieties of parameter like its voltage regulation, efficiency and corresponding characteristics of. A machine before going to use in field, its performance can be known to be calculated and students should know how to calculate the performance of the machine by these parameters. We will do the practical of how to know the voltage regulation of the synchronous generator. Generally, the voltage regulation of the machine can be known directly. The machine up to 5 kV is known from direct loading. It means the machine will be loaded up with rated condition. Then so then the load is thrown up and the voltage regulation can be known from this method. But this practical will be the next. The first we will do how to know the voltage regulation by indirect method. In indirect method, there are three methods. One is synchronous impedance method, MMM method, and zero power factor method. But today we will do the practical on knowing of this voltage regulation of this synchronous generator by the help of synchronous impedance method. Let's have a little bit of theorization. After that, we'll come to here and do the practical. Welcome to the theorization of the practical voltage regulation of synchronous generator by synchronous impedance method. Let's we need to know first what the materials required for the execution of above experiment. You can see here we need first a DC AC MG set with trainer, trainer where the DC power supply is mounted in order to Run the DC motor which is act as a prime mover for the synchronous generator. In DC CMG set, prime mover is the DC compound motor of 7.5 HP, 23 ampere. This is the rated, this is these are the rated ratings of this motor. You can see here. This is the rating uh, rated speed of this motor. This prime mover is mechanically coupled to a generator, three-phase synchronous generator. Uh, of this generator, we are going to measure the voltage regulation by the synchronous impedance method. The three phase synchronous generator of 5 kV is a rated load current and this is the rated terminal voltage and this is the speed. You can see here this is the 1500 rpm is the rotor speed of this compound motor is equal to the rotor speed of this synchronous generator. We need a one set for that. In trainer you can see uh, while we do the practical you can see lot of equipment mounted on that but we need a one board DC power supply is available and four point setter is required. This 4 point starter is required to run the starter so that you know to run the motor so that motor will not damage. If you connect the motor directly to the DC power supply, it will damage. When you can so that the, this is the purpose of the starter to run the motor. Next, we require the stat in order to control the speed of this motor by the flux method. Uh, you have to control the speed, you have to maintain while doing this practical, you have to maintain the speed constant. For that, you know, to maintain the speed constant of that synchronous generator, rheostat is required of 300 ohm and 2 ampere in you know, order to change the speed of the prime over by the flux controlling method. Next, tachometer is required to measure whether we achieve our speed or not, designated speed, whether we achieve our rated speed or not. Suppose speed is get decreased, we need to, you know, to increase, we have to increase the resistance of this rheostat. Suppose uh, speed is in you know, order to decrease the speed, we have to decrease the resistance of the rheostat. Connectors in the connecting wire are also required. As per our requirement, we need the connectors and the connecting wires. Connectors connecting wire required for the short circuiting the terminal of the synchronous generator while doing the AC test. And the OC test for the OC, AC stray, all these things, wires are required for the making the connection. Let's go into the theory in depth. First, you should know what may be voltage regulation of a synchronous generator. Voltage regulation of a synchronous generator is the variation in terminal voltage from full load to no load by maintaining constant speed and field current. It means, suppose this is your generator, what is the rated voltage? Suppose rated voltage is 415 volt when it is loaded, when it is fully loaded. And when this load is thrown off, suppose the voltage will obviously increase or decrease that depend upon the power factor and the that depend upon the power factor. What is the value of the voltage? after total load will be thrown up. Suppose in now this this is the your terminal voltage 415 volt at full load condition when the load will be thrown up what will the voltage that is your no load voltage that is during the absence of load, loads that is no load voltage. 
and loaded rated voltage means during the presence of rated loaded condition to the synchronous generator at the output of the synchronous generator while doing that one means while throwing off that load rated load from that of your synchronous generator out of output of the synchronous generator you must ensure one thing is that your constant speed you have to maintain that speed constant and the fill current it means there shouldn't be any change in the speed and the fill current of the synchronous generator while throwing the load and this voltage regulation is depend upon the power factor of the load its situation is not like that uh, situation is not like that uh, voltage will increase after load is thrown off not like that it's depend upon the power factor in case of unit in linking power factor the positive voltage regulation it means the voltage drop is there your voltage will be increased at no load condition with respect to the full loaded conditions but in case of leading power factor the voltage regulation is negative or zero what you know from it is that our voltage regulation depend upon the power factor of the load in case of your synchronous generator formula of the percentage of voltage regulation you can see here this is uh, ez minus vt by vt uh, into 100 what in by vt as i said suppose this is 415 volt during the loaded condition when the load will be thrown up suppose the voltage will be 480 voltage this is the suppose i suppose is that irrespective of any loads whether obviously this is a lagging load so that in case of no load the no load voltage is 480 then eg is the generated voltage per phase 480 is the generated voltage i can calculate 480 is the generated voltage minus 415 is the rated terminal voltage divided by 450 this is the way of calculating the voltage regulation of the synchronous generator this is the voltage regulation of synchronous generator in percentage as 100 is multiplied and this is nothing but the drop of voltage i can say it is v drop by v terminal v rated i can say it is v drop by v rated into 100 is the voltage regulation of synchronous generator as i have already told you that voltage regulation is the one of the vital parameter to decide the performance of the synchronous generator how decide the performance more the voltage regulation means it's not good you have to minimize the more generator will perform better when the voltage regulation value is be less more voltage drop less voltage drop means better performance of the machine there are the different method of calculation of voltage regulation we need to calculate because voltage regulation is one of the most performance which decide the performance of a machines this is one of the very vital parameter which decide the performance of the machine less voltage regulation less drop means better voltage regulation better performance uh, the voltage regulation have to be the value of voltage regulation have to be minimum so that there will be less voltage drop this decide just like efficiency this also decide the performance of a machine this is the one of the correct characters which affect the performance of a machine there are different methods of calculating the voltage regulation one is direct loading one is indirect loading the indirect loading indirect loading means what load is directly connected to the generator this generally in case of if the rating is less than 5 kva these cases are under consideration if the rating of this machine is more than 5 kva then indirect method generally employed but direct loading means how the direct loading is happening it means first generator is operate or at rated, rated condition then all of a sudden the load is thrown off and at constant speed and constant uh, fill current and calculate the uh, what your uh, no load voltage we'll do this direct loading test method on our next practical but now we'll switch over to the indirect method which is generally opted for the rating of machines more than 5 kva Again, these are three ways of measurement of indirect methods. One is synchronous impedance method, ampere down methods or MMM methods, zero power factor methods. These are the three ways of measuring a synchronous generator in indirect method. In synchronous impedance method, how we calculate uh, the voltage regulation? Let's have a uh, theory in details first. We'll do the practical at our left after the, this completion of this theory session. For calculating regulation, following data are required. Generally, you know, to calculate the regulation of this uh, machine, because uh, regulation is very one. Of, as I already told you that regulation is one of the very vital parameters to decide the performance of a machine at different loading condition. So, uh, what are the three data? DC resistance test, open circuit characteristics, and short circuit characteristics. We will take the help of three tests 
to know the certain parameters and from that parameters we will calculate the voltage regulation these three data or these test characteristics are required for measuring the synchronous impedance if you see ez is equal to vt plus iazs you will get the vt from the nameplate what is the terminal voltage of this a machine synchronous generator or any machines can be known from its nameplate what is the full load current it means uh, up to what current a machine can sustain that is the full load current when the machine is fully loaded what is the value of current that also uh, can be known from the nameplate itself in this zs the synchronous impedance as this is the synchronous impedance method we have to calculate the synchronous impedance of this generator first this is easy this is terminal voltage you can see this rs and xs we have to calculate if this is symmetrical three phase machine symmetrical in each phase aspects so this is e and vt all are in phase this is generated voltage for phase this is terminal voltage for phase although we will measure the practical in practical measure the terminal voltage across to terminal means it is line voltage you have to convert this line voltage to the phase voltage this is the resistance and this is the reactance of the windings now how we calculate resistance and how we calculate the reactance this is the next i will tell you how we calculate the rs and xs then after we can calculate the voltage regulation how this ra can be calculated from the dc resistance test it means from the dc resistance test we can calculate the ra xs can be calculated after knowing dc resistance occ and acc take the help of you have to take the help of three test then then only you can calculate the xs let's go to the dc resistance first this is the circuit diagram of the dc resistance test this uh, this clearly illustrates how to measure the resistance of a synchronous generator when we do the practical i will show that there are six terminal on the terminal box of a synchronous generator these two terminal indicate the field winding of the synchronous generator this four terminal is meant for the armature windings as it is star connected that's why there is a four terminal for the armature winding in our lab our machine's field winding is at starter and armature winding is at rotor the resistance of the armature winding is measured by the help of ammeter voltmeter method in this method a dc voltage is supplied to the two across any two terminal of the armature winding in this ammeter measure uh, measure the current through the winding in this measure the voltage is resistance is nothing but voltage divided by the current this measure the rdc rdc means it is a combination of two as they is connected in series you have to divide it by two how to do the same how to tabulate and how to the practical i will explain in details while doing the practical for the dc resistance test from there we calculate a, uh, from this test you calculate the resistance of the winding while dc as the uh, as we apply dc so it is rdc since the machine is ac machines you have to consideration of rac how the rac will calculate rac will calculate is equal to rac is equal to k multiply with rdc rdc is already will get from our ammeter voltmeter method multiply the this with a factor this factor is nothing but the skin effect the factor is on the account of skin effect i'll again explain i'll do the practical in this way we can measure the dc resistance of the synchronous generator after followed by a dc ac resistance of the synchronous generator uh, this circuit diagram illustrate how to uh, conduct the open circuit characteristics test of a synchronous generator as i have already told you that three data is required for obtaining the synchronous impedance of a synchronous generator we have already discussed the dc resistance test now it's for the occ theory occ it's the open circuit characteristics open means circuit means for the what it is open is written over here since while doing this practical no load is connected to the output of a synchronous generator characteristics means it is a curve it is a curve between what it's a curve between two electrical parameters one is the voltage across two terminal that is vt or vt by root 3 is the phase voltage with respect to the field current this ammeter i will take the help of a multimeter while do the practical to measure the field current this is the curve between voltage versus if it's identical to the magnetization curve of any magnets uh, electromagnets here you can see this is the supply ac supply and this is the dp switch this is the variac this is the variac of this already this section is already mounted on the uh, trainer 
this is DC supply. This is AC. It is a uncontrolled rectifier is there. As I symbol is diode, you can see here. This is an uncontrolled rectifier. It is a DC. And if DC is given to the uh, field winding of the synchronous generator, uh, you can control the field winding current IF by changing the variable. By moving, by changing the variable, you can control the field current. Field current is in x-axis, and the accordingly the voltage will generate. Initially, you can see here this is the model graph. This is exactly, but situation is not like that. When the field current is zero, the voltage is not zero. There is certain voltage because of residual magnetism. As the field current goes on increasing, voltage goes on increasing up to certain limit. After that, the ratio of increasing is not of that rate of initial case. It's because of your uh, increase in the reluctance of the core. The core reluctance get considerable. Now the iron part called come in, come into the pictures after certain condition. Before that, air core only take part in the deciding factor for the IF current. Is is the considerable is the as the core reluctance is not that much of value while the IF is less and the IF achieves certain value. Now the you cannot neglect the reluctance of the core to measure the terminal voltage of the. Uh, output terminal voltage of the synchronous generator. I will use it a single multimeter to measure the, this uh, data and tabulate in the table. I will show you, I will explain you everything in details while doing the practical. This, this is the circuit diagram to bet, for the better illustration of short circuit test. You can see here why it is short circuit because the output terminal of the synchronous generator gets shunted. You can see here the output terminal is get shunted with the help of the connector. You can see here. This part I have already explained in the while explaining OCC, no need to explanation of the same. You can see here again this measure the IF, the field current. And this characteristics is the curve between short circuit armature current versus field current. You can see here as armature current, as field current is goes on increasing, armature current also goes on increasing. This is sorted, this is short circuited armature current. Uh, in this way, you have to take the help of 3 ammeter to tabulate the data of the circuit armature of per pitch, but I will take the help of a clamp meter to, to do the same. I will explain the same in details. I will do the practical and tabulate the data in the table and draw the model graph from the data we get from the table. There are certain assumptions you have to take into consideration while calculating the voltage regulation of the synchronous generator. The ZS is constant. We are considering ZS is constant. Exactly, ZS is not constant. Initially, ZS is linear. You can see from the OCC card. You can see here. Initially, ZS is linear. After that, the ZS is no more linear due to the considerable effect of the reluctance of the core. Next, the flux under test condition is same as the low under load condition. We consider it as the assumptions. Why? Exactly the flux due to short circuit condition is because of your demagnetizing effect only is there within that. We can, but while it's loaded, there may be uh, lagging effect or maybe leading effect, it depends upon the power factor of the load itself. Effect of armature reactions by an imaginary reactance. The reactance of the synchronous winding is, is, is on account of armature reaction, on the account of leakage reactance. You can see here, it's take into the both the consideration. But while we Calculating the voltage regulation by this method, we need a synchronous reactance. We consider synchronous. What we calculate the synchronous reactance, we consider it as a both. We are considering the both as a lump sum method. You are considering both, but exactly the exact value will become when you segregate the both the parameters. This is all about the assumptions and all. Let's do. Uh, let's do the practical and tabulate all the three. Datas which are required for the calculation of voltage regulation of synchronous generator. Let's go into the practical. Welcome to the practical session of the practical voltage regulation of synchronous generator. Is I have already told you all in theory session is that there are two ways of calculating the voltage regulation. One is direct method. Next is indirect method. In indirect method, there are three ways. First is by synchronous impedance method. MMM method and zero power factor method. But on today's practical, we will do on synchronous impedance method. 
generally the direct loading method is implement the generator rating of to 5 kV while going through this sequence method there are we need three data first is dc resistance it means the resistance of the winding of the generator next is we need to cop to characteristics curve that is occ and acc let's do the practical and go through all the three data and calculate the voltage regulation before we proceed further and do the practical we have a quick idea on the circuit setup and all the required material let's go through it the synchronous generator is coupled to the dc compound motor this dc compound motor acts as a primer to the synchronous generator you can see from this name plate the rating of the synchronous generator is 5 kv it means we can measure the voltage regulation by the help of direct loading method but today's practical we will do the voltage regulation find out the voltage regulation by the help of synchronous impedance method on the next practical we will do the help of direct loading if you go to the terminal box you can see there is six terminals these two terminal is for the field winding of this generator this fourth terminal is the armature winding of this generator as the armature is star connected you can see there are four terminal one is neutral this is r this is y and this is b that this motor we need a starter although there is starter on the panel itself but we will take the help of this portable starter in this experiment this is a four point starter you can see there is a four terminal over here l a f and this is a four point this is four point starter we will take the help of this rheostat to control the speed of this compound motor you can see here the other than this there are three tools this multimeter acts as a ammeter to measure the field current of this synchronous generator this clamp meter or you can say it is a torque tester this is used to measure the current while do the practical and the short circuit testing or short circuit characteristics while do that one i'll explain you later in this multimeter acts as a voltmeter you know to measure the voltmeter of any two terminal while doing do, while doing occ characteristics open circuit characteristics let's but before to go the, that one as i have already told you that three data is required first is dc resistance of this armature let's find out the resistance of this armature next we move to the acc then after occ here the resistance across any two winding you can see how i'm measuring first change mode to the resistance mode then measure this is the resistance across r and y this is resistance across y and b you can see likewise b and r we will measure and reflect the data on our table i made a one table for the calculating the dc resistance of the synchronous generator let's measure and reflect the data on the table first i reflect the measure value on this table you can see here is a resistance across ry that is 4.90 across this terminal ry this is resistance across yb across this terminal 4.62 around and this is resistance across b and r terminal generally students you need to follow voltmeter ammeter method that i have discussed in the theory session but here i am taking the help of multimeter to measure the resistance across two terminal since the resistance is the summation of the winding of two phase so you have to first you have to calculate average of this three, three then divide by two in order to calculate the resistance for each phase this r average is the resistance across two terminals means is considered two phase so in order to calculate a single phase you have to divide by 2 the 5.17 divided by 2 is equal to 2.58 ohm this is the resistance for fetch we measure the dc resistance but this generator is of ac generator while it's operate due to skin effect the resistance of the band winding will be enhanced it increase due to the skin effect you know to take the consideration you have to multiply certain factor to the dc value and calculate the resistance during ac case how will generally do generally multiplying factor is of 1.202 1.75 on account of skin effect depending depending on the size of this machine typically we take the value of 1.25 here and the value comes around 3.22 this is the 
AC resistance power phase that is power phase value is 3.22 after getting one data that is resistance of the winding next we will move to open circuit characteristics this is the table for the open circuit characteristics one multimeter which is act as a ammeter measure this field current another multimeter this multimeter will measure the open circuit voltage you measure the voltage across two terminal of three set of like BRY, BYB, BVR then take the average like previous case then calculate B phase since it is star connected the voltage is line voltage so the phase voltage is equal to what will get average divided by root 3 you will get the line voltage let's do the practical before do the practical you need to operate the prime over to its rated speed the rated speed is 1500 rpm let's rotate this prime over that is this dc compound motor to its 1500 rpm by the help of this rheostat you can make it to the 1500 rpm you can know the other speed is reached to its rpm or not by the help of this tachometer you can see it from here let's do that one As you can see, my, mot my motor is rotating at 1372 rpm, it is not the rated speed. Let's reach to the motor to the rated speed by the help of the gear start. We somehow managed to reach to its rated speed by the help of this gear start of this field winding. You can see here, the speed is around 1500 rpm, that is the rated speed of this prime over the DC compound motor. Next we will measure the output terminal voltage of the synchronous generator. You can see the terminal voltage when this motor is rotating at rapid speed is around 14 volt across RY. Across RY, YB it is around 14 volt and across B and R it is around 14.1 or 14 volt you can consider. At that time you can see at that time
voltage, terminal voltage of this generator. You can see here. This is the rated terminal voltage during the field current of 1.5 ampere. This is the first data for the synchronous impedance, that is the resistance of the armature winding. This is for the calculating the open circuit voltage, a different field current. You can see here that I have already shown, you can see in the practical, even after the field winding is zero, field current is zero, there is certain voltage, 8 volt. This is fetch. This is, you, you can measure the terminal voltage, that is the line voltage. If you divide it by root 3, you will get the phase voltage. Accordingly, I tabled my experiment of OCC, you can see here. As field current goes on increasing, you can see from this model graph. As the field current goes on increasing, my terminal voltage also goes on increasing. After certain, after a certain value of field current, the terminal voltage will not goes on increase as previous case. This is the saturation effect. Okay, you can see from the data, it is well apparent from the table itself. At zero ampere, the terminal voltage is fourteen volt. At 0 0.1, this is 63.7 volt. Likewise, you can see from this table, I get the rated voltage that is 415 across two terminal of the synchronous generator at field current around 1.5 ampere. So this is the field current at which at which I get the rated output voltage. Now, this is my benchmark. Why it is benchmark? Because while doing the SCC short circuit characteristics, I measure at what current, at what is the value of short circuit current at this current, at this field current, what is the value of short circuit armature current. Next, let's do the SCC practical. Now we'll do the practical of SCC. We have finished already the OCC. There are three terminals. This is three terminal is sorted at this point. You can see here at this point, this three output of three terminal of this generator is get sorted. I'm using this clamp meter to measure the short circuit current. By this, in this way, we can measure the short circuit current. Now you can see, I switch it to the ampere range. There is no current. It means since I'm not operating this one, that's why the current is zero. When this generator will operate and when they will start functioning, then certain current will be arise and we can measure in this way. We measure, we can sort it with the help of three separate ammeter, but here I am just sorted it. In the place of ammeter, I am measure the current with the help of this clamp meter for fast RFH. In this way, I can measure the Y phase. And in this way, we can measure the B phase and take a average of it. It is practical. Students must consider one thing is that Never keep it to any other values. First, keep the field current to the zero value. You can see it from this ammeter. You can see it from the ammeter. Always keep this ammeter value to the zero. It means the field current is zero. Now, we are going to start this motor at its rated speed and measure the short circuit current first at the zero field current. Then, it goes on increasing the field current and measure the corresponding short circuit armature current. Now you can see my trimover is running the rated speed. So the field current is zero. Let's measure the short circuit armature current. Uh, short circuit current of phase one first. You can see the short circuit current is around 0 0.5. Next measure the second one. That's the 0 0.5 or 49 something like that. Okay, you can see this is even after the field current is zero, very sudden. Let's measure the short circuit and measure current. 
This is the 1.62 is the first phase current, short circuit phase current when the my field current is 0 0.1 ampere. Likewise, this is for the second phase, 1.62. This is for my third phase, 1.58. Next, next we will measure the short circuit current. Let's measure the short circuit armature current. Look at the armature current. 2.75 ampere for the first phase. 2.76 is almost equal because of symmetrical symmetricity. You both on recording the same on the table. I will show you later on. Now I will go through increasing the field current and measure the corresponding short-circuit amplitude. Let's see. Let's go through increasing the field current and increasing the field current and measure the short-circuit amplitude current. See, this is my benchmark field current which is 1.5 ampere. Let's measure the short-circuit current. See, my short-circuit current is around 18.3 ampere. This is at the field current 1.5 ampere. Let's measure the short-circuit current. See, this is my field current. This is at the field current 1.5 ampere. Let's measure the short-circuit current. See, this is my field current 1.5 ampere. Let's measure the short-circuit current. See, this is my field current 1.5 ampere. My terminated terminal voltage is 415 voltage. This is 18.18 ampere. This is 18 ampere. This is 18.18 ampere. Next, go to measuring the second part of this. Next, we'll do what? We'll go to increasing once. We'll go to the next step. We'll go to increasing the second step. So, when the field current is 1.52, let's measure the perfect current. This is my short circuit current when the field current is 1.54. You can see the table of short circuit characteristics. When the field current is 0, there is 3 phase current. I take average of them and this is the S, this is star connected. The phase current is equal to line current. As I am goes on increasing the field current, the armature current also goes on increasing. This is the model graph for the SEC. As I have already show you the model graph of OCC also. Now I am going to plot OCC and the SEC at the same curve and measure the voltage regulation and measure the synchronous impedance followed by voltage regulation. You can see this is the calculation of synchronous impedance. How can you calculate the ZS? The open circuit voltage per phase, this voltage that is 415 voltage, we will collect it from OCC. The field current at which we attend the 415 volt while doing, doing OCC, that is the benchmark current. It means while doing our OCC, we come to know that the rated voltage achieved when the field current is 1.5 ampere. This is the benchmark current, you can tell. Now it we'll goes on finding when field current is 1.5 ampere, what is the value of short circuit current? What is the value of short circuit current? You can see from this table when the field current is 1.5 ampere, my short circuit current is 18.08 round. So what we'll do? You divide 240 with 18.08, you'll get 13.2s, 27 ohm. This is the synchronous impedance of this alternator is we already find out the resistance of of this alternator from the resistance table DC resistance table that is around 3.22 ohm next what we'll do from that from uh, from the given parameters of ZS and RS we can find out the excess excess that is the synchronous impedance 12.87 ohm next Suppose you want to find out the voltage regulation of this synchronous generator when it operated 0.5 power factor load. Generally, when you are going to operate? When you are going to operate this full loaded condition? Full loaded means the, if you go to the nameplate, if you go through the nameplate, you can see the armature current, the full load armature current is 6.9 ampere. This is the rated condition. And suppose the load is 0.8 power factor and the rated armature current is achieved 0.6.9 ampere. Let's see what is the voltage regulation at that point of time. 
E is equal to V plus I A Z S. V is the terminal voltage per fetch. This is I A armature current, rated armature current. Well, the, when the um, generator is fully loaded, this is the synchronous impedance. We got this impedance from the help of OCC and the SEC. Next, we will go on calculating 240 plus 6.9 is the armature current and you get, you get 316.36. This is the this is the generated voltage. This is the generated phase voltage. Then the voltage regulation is E minus V by V. All are in fetch. The voltage regulation is very poor. Here you can see the regulation is very poor. General, this is a pessimistic approach of calculation of voltage regulation. In other two methods, if you go to the MF method and the zero power factor method, that will be very much accurate. The zero power factor is very much accurate, but this is the pessimistic pessimistic. The regulation what will get generally more than the actual value. I can see I draw both the OCC and the SC on the same plot for the better interpretation. You can see it you can measure. You, you can see the impedance is linear up to certain condition. After that, with increase of field current, the voltage is not increasing with the initial rate of increasing of current. It means initially, when the current increase, voltage increases in linearly, so that impedance is linear. But after when the field core is when the core is get saturated, there is no more of there is very minute increase in the terminal voltage. You can see from the graph. You can there is straight straightening is here. That's why. Same, if you go to the SC short circuit case, initially this is not zero exactly. Have some values because of this. Your residual magnetism effect, which, since voltage is there, therefore current is there. As it goes on increasing the field current, current also increase. Now how will calculate the ZS at any point? You, exactly, you can calculate at any given field. At any given point, at at any point of field current, what is the value of voltage and what is the value of short circuit? Divide voltage by voltage divided by current is your synchronous impedance. Before saturation, the value is linear. After it gets saturated, after it gets saturated, the synchronous impedance will give some higher value. That's why this is a very pessimistic approach with we completed our finding the voltage regulation of synchronous generator with the help of synchronous impedance method next we'll calculate the voltage regulation by directly direct loading method in that since the our synchronous generator is of 5 kV we can implement direct loading in which the generator is loaded to the fully loaded condition means here the full load is 6.9 ampere we load it up to this then we thrown up the loads at constant speed and constant fill current and see what is the uh, what is the open circuit voltage and we can gauge the difference out from that and measure the voltage regulation of the synchronous generator